Hi everyone, Rupert Goff here from The Mortgage Lab. Today I'm talking about the key people you need as a property buyer. Surrounding yourself with property experts isn't just a good idea, it's absolutely necessary. And while it sounds expensive, you don't need to be rolling in cash. In fact, in many cases, the advice is free. First up, the obvious one, and we would say that, wouldn't we, is of course a mortgage broker. A broker's services are almost always free, but there are some circumstances where a broker may charge, so make sure you check first. Typically this is if you need to borrow from a third tier lender that doesn't pay commission, or if you're buying and selling a property in a short amount of time, like less than two years. Mortgage brokers are useful for anyone in property, from home buyers to current home owners to property investors. Look to engage a broker as soon as you start preparing to buy a property, or if you're looking to make changes to your current mortgage. When buying a property, a broker will be able to tell you what you can afford and what you can do to increase the amount you can purchase. They will manage the finance application process for you and find the best bank and best deal for you. For current homeowners, they can help you choose the best refix period and account structure and negotiate the best deal with your bank. They'll also manage mortgage restructures and top ups as required outside of your usual refixing cycle. Next we have KiwiSaver advisors. These advisors are especially useful for first home buyers. If this is your first home, you may be eligible to withdraw your KiwiSaver. Ideally, you'd get in touch with a KiwiSaver when preparing for your mortgage pre-approval. Even if you're not withdrawing your KiwiSaver, it's an opportune time to check with an advisor whether your prescribed investor rate is correct. Many of our mortgage lab brokers are also KiwiSaver advisors. If you're self-employed or a property investor, then an accountant needs to be on your list. For the self-employed, the bank will want two years of financial records and IRD returns before issuing them a mortgage pre-approval. Generally, the bank asks for accounts completed by an accountant. This gives them the reassurance of a third-party verification of these accounts. However, if your accounts are very simple, then the bank may accept inland revenue returns in the place of accountant verified financials. For property investors, an accountant will help you identify the best legal and financial setup to maximize your profit. Next up is a real estate agent. Now I know what you're thinking, the real estate agent is just there for the vendor, but a good agent will often help buyers find the right property by looking through their listings. We've had many clients buy off book by keeping in touch with a good agent and receiving listings from them, often before they even go to the market. The key is to understand that the agent gets paid if they introduce you to the listing. If you turn up by yourself, you're cutting the buyer's agent out and they won't help you in the future. When you're starting to seriously look at houses, it's time to find a reputable builder for building inspections. Depending on the age of the house you're looking at, you may want to get a builder to walk through and check the property. Some will give verbal feedback, which is helpful for you, but doesn't have any legal ramifications if they miss something. A more in-depth report will be more expensive, but will give you a good list of to-dos when you finally purchase the house. Now let's talk about solicitors. These experts are key for anyone buying a property. While the bulk of a solicitor's work is done at the end, it's a good idea to engage one early. Make sure they're on the same page as you and that they are within your budget. Do they do a lot of work with home buyers or investors or are they a classically corporate law firm? Once you find a property, it's good practice to get your solicitor to look over the title and sale of purchase for any potential risks or issues. Once you've had an offer accepted, your solicitor is a key part of the settlement process. If you don't already work with a life and health insurance advisor, it's time to get one on board. The advice they provide is free and they help you navigate the complexities of insurance. You may have never considered life, health or income insurance before, but with mortgage payments to protect, it's worth looking into. If you already have cover, now's the time to get it reviewed as your old income protection policy may not be the best fit. When you made an offer on a house, that's the time to contact a fire and general insurance advisor. There are plenty of off the rack policies you can get, however, getting advice around which company has the best cover, particularly if you're in an earthquake prone area, has huge benefits. Fire and general brokers don't usually charge for advice, but do charge a premium on top of their insurance. The additional cost is well worth it when it comes to claim time though. So there you have it, the key people for your property team. You may have noticed that I haven't included a registered valuer in the list. This is because the banks now require a registered valuation report to be ordered through an independent system. This stops you from finding the most optimistic valuer around and getting a higher than accurate valuation. Don't order a valuation before you speak to your mortgage broker. If you have any mortgage related questions, we have a lot of great resources on our website, mortgagelab.co.nz. Thank you for joining me.